The Discovery, Chapter 13, Part 4 Nothing like a couple of months ago, Ahmed? David asked with a grin. Not even close. I'm glad to see them finally warming up to you. Honestly, it was stupid it even took them this long. Midnight said. David and Midnight shared a quiet laugh while they made their way through the city. Before long, they arrived at the main gate of the castle. Hearth-swarming reefs and decorations littered the structure, and the faint sounds of carols filled the air. As David and Midnight approached the door, the guards regarded them with a curt nod and allowed them through. Huh, I guess Storm isn't working today, David remarked. Why didn't you tell me about her before? I didn't meet her until I ran into her yesterday. Midnight questioned. Well, I don't know, I guess I forgot to. She's married though, so don't even worry about that if that's where you're going with this. David hastily pointed out. <laughs> Good. Like I said, you're all mine, big guy. Midnight said, with a seductive hint in her voice and a flick of her tail against David's leg. As long as you're mine too. David said warmly. Deal. David and Midnight strolled through the heavily decorated castle and saw the many hundreds of ponies scurrying about, trying to get the last of the decorations set up for the annual hearth-swarming party. As they made their way through the busy hallways, many ponies happily greeted them. David and Midnight returned their greetings for a while before arriving in the hallway leading to the throne room. It was surprisingly empty, though well decorated. They really like you here in the castle. Midnight noted, as she walked past the many murals adorning the walls. What can I say? I'm kind of a big deal around here. They probably miss my shenanigans. David said with a shrug. <laughs> what shenanigans? Midnight asked with a raised eyebrow. You barely left your room for the first week you were here. I have tons of shenanigans. Oh, like the time when I dropped that potted plant on that one guy? B blue balls or blue boy? Something like that. David pointed out. Blue blood? And David, you practically ran to Princess Celestia to tell her that it was an accident. A lot of the staff saw it happen too. Midnight said flatly. Well, d d yeah, but that was part of my master plan. That guy was being a dick, so I made a little show of the accident. A common misdirection. Tia never suspected a thing. David said proudly. Oh? And what did I never suspect exactly? Celestia's motherly tone filled the air. David nearly fell over from the speed at which he spun around to face the alabaster white alicorn. Midnight calmly bowed with a smirk, while Celestia looked over David with an amused expression on her face. Uh, nothing? David said unconvincingly. Hmm... Midnight, I don't suppose you would happen to know what it is that David is talking about, would you? Something about blue balls? Celestia asked with a knowing grin. I'm afraid not, princess. I don't know the full story behind David and his blue balls. Midnight snickered. Although, David and I are here to speak with you regarding your letter. Midnight calmly explained before breaking into laughter. She was quickly joined by the Sun Princess. David fought the ever-growing blush on his face as Midnight and Celestia shared a laugh at his expense. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. In all seriousness, though, we did come here to tell you some news, too. David said, trying to change the subject. <laughs> of course. I'm afraid Cadence and Twilight are both with this Sparkle family at the moment, but Luna is in the throne room. Please, follow me. Celestia said as she walked to the throne room doors. Celestia wrapped her golden magic around the heavy door and pushed it open. As the door found its way to the other side of the wall, Celestia walked in, followed immediately by David and Midnight. Luna sat on her throne with a bored look on her face that immediately perked up once she saw Midnight and David. Oh, Midnight, David. It's good to see you two again. I hope you've been doing well since our last talk. Luna said, flashing Midnight a knowing look. We've been doing very well, Princess. Midnight said with a bow. Please rise, it's just us here. Celestia said. 
Midnight quickly rose to her hooves and found her place at David's side as Celestia made her way to her throne. After she was sitting next to her sister, she spoke again. So please, tell us, what is this good news you have? Celestia asked. Well... Midnight started. I'm sure you both have a pretty good idea already, considering how you two have been playing matchmaker with us for the last week. Midnight lightly but heartily accused. Why, whatever do you mean, Midnight Shadow? Luna asked, feigning insult. We've only ever tried to direct you in the right path, for both your six. Indeed. We've helped you two along the way, but anything that happened between you while we were not there to directly intervene, well, that was your choice. Celestia added, an extremely smug smile on her face. Hmm. Now, I'm no expert, but it sounds to me like you two already know exactly what you caused. David said sarcastically. It is as Midnight said. We do have a fair idea as to the news you wish to share with us. Luna said with a knowing smile. And we could not be happier for you both. Celestia finished. David smiled. Then, uh, we're together. Uh, Mid and I... David started. We're dating now. Midnight finished for him. They looked at each other, and a soft smile graced their lips. After a tender moment, they turned their attention back to the princesses. Both Celestia and Luna flashed brilliant smiles, and they quickly rose from their thrones and walked down to David and Midnight to congratulate them. I am so happy for you both. Truly, this is a fantastic day. Not only just for you, but for Equestria as a whole. This proves love can come from anywhere. Cadence will be ecstatic. Celestia said, while giving David and Midnight warm hugs. I could not be happier for you. Midnight Shadow, David, I wish you both the absolute best in your future together. If you two would allow it, I would happily add two stars to the night sky, just for you. Luna said warmly. Thank you both so much. I don't think we could have gotten here without you. As if I didn't have enough of a reason to look at the night sky, you've given me one more. Luna, that really means a lot. David replied. Yes, thank you so much, both of you. I could not be more honored, your highnesses. Midnight said with a bow. Midnight, please rise. I would be honored to give the two of you something to enjoy every night. That is why I love being the Princess of the Night. Luna said, honesty clearly in her voice. Midnight quickly rose, and albeit with much hesitation, hugged Luna. Luna was startled for a moment, but quickly returned the hug in earnest. David and Celestia both smiled as they watched the two dark mares, before Celestia nudged David with her wing and pulled him closer. She draped her wing over her shoulder, using it as a makeshift curtain and whispered into his ear. So, about my letter. I don't know if you've told Midnight yet, or want to tell her at all, but Twilight and I have found a spell that will turn you into a pony. It would require a considerable amount of transcribing, but there is a good chance that it will work, should you decide on it. Thank you. I'll have to think about it more, but I think that for right now, I'm just happy the way things are. David whispered back. Celestia withdrew her wing from David and smiled. Very well then. I wish you and Midnight the very best, David. You both deserve it. Celestia said in a more normal voice. Thank you. You're the best, Tia. David said while giving Celestia another quick hug. Midnight finally separated from Luna and walked over beside David. Thank you both for everything. A pony couldn't ask for better princesses. Midnight said warmly. Anything for our friends. Celestia said with a friendly smile. Well, we'd better get out of your hair. It looks like you guys have been pretty busy with all the holiday preparation. David said. Indeed. We have been rather busy lately, but you are always welcome to drop by whenever you want. We would love to see you on Hearthswarming Eve, if you don't have plans already. Luna replied. I think we could drop by, Midnight said. Then, we'll see you on Hearthswarming Eve. I think you two are going to have a long and wonderful relationship. 
I can't wait to see you again. Celestia said with a warm smile. Thank you. We'll see you in a few days. David said as he and Midnight turned to leave. Both Luna and Celestia waved their goodbyes to the new couple until they were out of the door and out of sight. Oh, shoot! Celestia exclaimed. What? Luna questioned. I owe Cadence 20 bits. I thought it was going to take at least another month. I have a strong feeling both princesses know what those two get up to. Anywho, let's get on to our loving donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suro Ryan, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Match Effect 109, Darkside Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Two Hex, Sword of the Remorge, Omicron Library, Runeslide 9852, Will Chris, Twinkie, Rise, Soul Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancer Crust, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat GGF, Murder Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.